people that have hiv they are usually stigmatized and that is a very bad thing you don't need to stigmatize people that have hiv right because they are human beings like you most of them don't know how they contracted it it's not everybody that has hiv that had a promiscuous lifestyle What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to another exciting episode of Health Savvy with Dr. O. You already know. And as usual, I'm always excited to have you guys here with me. So thanks for always tuning in every Thursday because you know the show Health Savvy happens every Thursday here on this channel. Yeah. So today we're talking about a very, very interesting topic. I'm sure so, some of you are already like excited. Everybody is shaking when you saw the title of the topic. For those of you that have seen the title anyway, that listen to our podcast, you probably also saw the title of what the topic is. Yeah, we also have podcasts. We are available on everywhere where you listen to your podcast. So please subscribe to the podcast or follow the po- podcast. And don't forget to rate it. Five star, five star rating. Okay, so as I was saying, we have a very interesting topic lined up for today. First of all, let me start by saying we're talking about HIV, right? And HIV is a virus that has been with us for a long time. There's many questions and all that about it. And there are a lot of gray areas when we talk about HIV. So let me tell you the backstory of how we came about talking, you know, how we arrived at talking about this topic. One of our subscribers sent me a message, a DM on Instagram, and she was like, she's been in a relationship with this guy that she just met for the past two months, right? so basically they've not had um, any sexual intercourse yet however she's been kissing the guy and somehow they went for a screening where they had to go for like screening tests for them to maybe pre-employment screening or something like that and then the guy found out that he was hiv positive she's not hiv positive at least at the time of the screening test she was not hiv positive so she's not really scared i just know that is it possible that she's going to test positive for HIV later? Because yeah, she has not had intercourse with the guy. She's not really done anything with the guy since they just met. However, she has definitely kissed the guy, like kiss, normal kiss on the mouth and kiss like mouth to mouth, prolonged kissing, like what you see in movies, those kind of things. Anyway, so she wants to know like, is kissing enough to transmit HIV? And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about right here, right now on this ship. Let me start with a bit of introduction for those who don't know yet because there are some people that might not actually know what HIV is. So HIV is uh, an abbreviated um, or is an acronym for human immunodeficiency virus, right? And what is a virus? A virus is like a microorganism, pretty much like bacteria, fungi, all these things. It's a microorganism that can attack um, the body and cause infections, right? So what this HIV virus does? is it attacks your body's immune system so let's rewind a bit what is immune system and what's the function so basically your body's immune system right is supposed to help you fight against diseases fight against infection that's why you're not sick all the time that's why you're not coughing all the time that's why you don't have a fever all the time that's why you're not catching every single disease that is flying in the air right because your immune system is actually functioning and fighting hard to protect you from all the plenty things that you cannot see that are working against your body so what this hiv virus does is the moment it gets into your body it goes into your bloodstream and it attacks the immune system so it weakens the immune system and the immune system is not able to adequately protect you against all these diseases not able to protect you against infections from virus bacteria and all those things right so you now become susceptible let me use a, a, a word that isn't easier to understand you now become more vulnerable to getting diseases, getting infections and all that. So that would be really bad for you, right? Because now any small thing, you're going to catch it, you're going to fall sick. And it's pretty, it's just bad news, basically. When you first of all get the virus, it's called HIV. But when you have gotten to the advanced stage, when the virus has really attacked your immune system, so that's when it's called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. And this is when um, HIV is at its advanced stage, right? And usually by this time, there are physical manifestations and there are other things that you can see physically because normally they say AIDS no the issue for face. More like HIV no the issue for face. By the time you have AIDS, you might have some things characteristic. You might manifest some things that would make a doctor at least suspect that you must have um, HIV or you must have AIDS, right? So anyway, that's long story. Now let me get back to what we're talking about. Oh yeah, and I still have to tell you that when someone gets HIV, right, HIV as of now, as of the time of recording this video, has no cure, right? So you are living with it for the rest of your life. Uh, we don't know what will happen in a few years to come. There might be cures, 
for HIV, there might be vaccines to prevent it and all that. But as of now, HIV has no cure, right? So that's why it's a really big deal for some people because it's like, okay, a disease that has no cure, right? I better not contract it because for some people it's like, they don't want to have to live with having to take drugs and stuff like that the rest of their lives. And they don't want to have to live with the stigma because let's face it, people that have HIV, they are usually stigmatized and that is a very bad thing. You don't need to stigmatize people that have HIV, right? Because they are human beings like you. Most of them don't even know how they contracted it. It's not everybody that has HIV that had a promiscuous lifestyle. Some people could have contracted it through needles, like when they went to the hospital, through blood transfusion, through, you know, when you went to Bobby Salon Clipper, they didn't sterilize the clipper caught someone else and he came used it caught you that kind of thing so don't stigmatize don't judge don't jump into conclusions when you hit someone at hiv it doesn't mean they're promiscuous right anyway as i was saying as much as when people get hiv right the virus is incurable as of now there are actually drugs that you can take that can help to you know prolong your life so you live a longer life you live a healthier life and you live a good quality life right so there are a lot of people living with hiv that are healthy like even healthier than someone that don't have hiv so so don't feel so fly with yourself because you don't have hiv and it's always good to check your status regularly you know to know your status check do hiv tests every now and then right maybe once a year at least to just check and make sure that you don't have hiv because if you have hiv you want to be conscious not to transmit it to other people like this guy he didn't know he had hiv right if not for the screening test he had to do for pre-employment he never would have known and he would have just been spreading it around spreading it to his partner you know those kind of things so we need to know our status so that we don't spread this virus so now let me just answer the question okay to answer the question i'm going to touch this I've said I've been asked question like 100 times now, so don't worry, I'm getting there. So, first of all, how is HIV transmitted? It's usually transmitted through bodily fluids. So, what do you mean by bodily fluids? So, mainly blood, right? So, blood is one of the major, major, major fluids that transmit HIV. Semen. So, semen is, you know, what men ejaculate when they orgasm during sexual intercourse. That is another thing that transmits HIV. And um, vaginal fluids. So, of course, women also have their own fluids that come from the vagina genitals and all that and that can transmit hiv but one bodily fluid that there is a misconception about is saliva saliva does not transmit hiv so you cannot get hiv ordinarily if you kiss someone right because hiv is not transmitted through saliva but but there is actually a but so you need to listen up for this part increase the volume so you can hear me very well but if the person you are kissing right has like sores in the mouth or has like a cut in the mouth that has bled or is bleeding right remember hiv is transmitted through blood and you kiss the person that hiv can actually you know get into your own mouth now if you also have a cut in your own mouth right and somehow the hiv virus manages to enter your bloodstream through that cut then you can transmit hiv through kissing but let's think about it. What are the odds that you're going to have a cut in your mouth and the other person is going to have a cut in their mouth? Blah, 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 blah. And the person that has a cut in their mouth has HIV. It's very rare, right? So, yes, there is a slim chance that you can get HIV through kissing, but it's a slim chance. It's very rare. So, that's why um, we don't normally like to say HIV is transmitted, transmitted through kissing. Because ordinarily, you can get HIV from kissing someone as long as nobody has cuts in their mouth or sores in their mouth or bleeding gums or something, right? No, you can't get HIV from that. But, but, like I said, if any of you have cells in your mouth or both of you have cells in your mouth and one of you has HIV, then chances are the other person is going to get it even though it's really, really rare. So, yeah, you might want to be careful about who you go around kissing. Don't go kissing everybody that comes your way. That kind of thing, right? And also, it helps to know your status so you don't go spreading stuff around. So, good to know your status. Good to be careful. One of the things that we see about HIV is one way to prevent from getting it, especially the one that is sexually transmitted, is abstinence. If you cannot be abs abstinent, means you're not having sexual intercourse. For example, if you're not married or something, yeah, you can decide not to have sexual intercourse because why? You get. And then, if you cannot abstain and you say, I must, I cannot do without having sexual intercourse, I must have sexual intercourse, right? Then, practice safe sex by using a, um, condom okay there's male condoms and there's female condoms so my partner doesn't want to wear condoms an excuse one of you must sharp it. somebody must wear condom because you need to protect yourself from hiv but bear it in mind that nothing is 100 effective yes condoms are effective right 
but nothing is 100 percent especially if you don't use the condom the right way i have a video where i talked about 12 mistakes people make when they're using condoms i'm going to link it down below you need to watch that after watching this so don't go anywhere once you're done watching this just go click that video and watch it so that if you're trying to protect yourself from hiv you don't make those mistakes because if you make those mistakes then you're not protecting yourself you're just wearing condom for the fun of wearing you're actually not protecting yourself i trust me you don't want that to happen so let's be using our condoms the right way right another thing is now we can prevent hiv that is sexually transmitted is make sure that we are in a monogamous relationship so this person knows our status this person knows the status they are only having sexual intercourse with themselves then chances of them getting hiv is slim at least chances of them getting hiv through sexual intercourse is slim like i said there are other ways you can transmit hiv right um needle sharing so those people that use drugs and they share needles you can transmit hiv or even if you work in a hospital and mistakenly you had a needle prick if the person that you know you are taking the blood from or the person that used the needle had hiv you can also get hiv right if you are sharing clippers if you are sharing blades and stuff like that so that's why you should share all those sharp objects that can easily cut you because you don't know where those sharp objects have been you don't know who has used it you don't know if the person had a cut and cut himself and then you now use that and you cut yourself it's just really really crazy so that's why when you go to salons use your own pedicure kit use your own manicure kit use your own clippers do not share needles right do not share any sharp objects very very important hiv cannot be transmitted because i heard someone saying that hiv can be transmitted through mosquito bites where did you get an idea from hiv cannot be transmitted through mosquito bites okay so just because mosquito bites you clap your hand you see blood on your hand doesn't mean hey see blood what if this person has hiv or what if a mosquito bites someone that has hiv and comes to bite me the mosquito can transmit the hiv from the person to me nah there's nothing like that insects don't transmit hiv very important you cannot get hiv by sharing cutlery with someone like i said before hiv is not transmitted through saliva okay you cannot get hiv by sharing toilet seats with someone so people say ah it was when i sat on the toilet to that public toilet that's when i got hiv how did you have sexual intercourse with the toilet so you cannot get hiv by sharing toilet you can't get hiv by sharing cutlery you can't get hiv by sharing a hug you can't get hiv from kissing ordinarily you can only get it in the rare event that both of you have sores in your mouth and one of you has hiv okay so i hope i have been able to answer the question even though again it's one of those gray areas about hiv but i hope i've been able to answer your question if you have any more questions don't hesitate write in the comment section down below send me a dm on instagram i will be more than happy so this is how we do it if you send me a question i might be able to reply immediately if i'm not able to reply then i'll do a video request and i'll let you know when the video request is up it depends on the volume of questions i get okay so thanks once again for watching always remember a healthy you is a happy you see you next week Thank you.